Okay, so welcome to the video. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get started. If you guys out there, I can see the chat. So if there's anything going on, just kind of let me know and I will try to fix it. So jump right into the video. Get this desktop up here. Um, so what I want to show you guys is when you get your software and how to download it. Oh, let me turn this YouTube off now. Because I'm going to mute mine over here. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to be actually looking this way. And hopefully you guys can see the desktop. Okay. So when you get your software let me put this over here bring this over here and go over to the website okay so i can't actually see you guys now because i had to take that off but i'm gonna try to uh, follow along on the chat with my with my phone and what I'll do is I'll go in I'll show you how to download the software and all of that stuff and then uh, how to activate it and then I'll go over I'll stop in and out and kind of go over some questions so from the website I've got a couple of different products for you to choose from and I'm not going to go through that because that's pretty much self-explanatory but um, it's the sub monthly subscription base, and then you've got the uh, the single user license, and then if you want to use the software in the cloud, you can do that. So that's a really good thing. Um, and on my cell phone, I'm only getting the bottom of the video. So that's a really good thing. But let me go ahead and show you guys when you were to go in and download. Uh, the software go and see if I can find something because I've, I've had a lot of people who are having problems downloading it getting it unzipped and all of that type of stuff so just go in here and find a order really quick when you receive the software you're going to get an email from the website that email that you get from the website should have a download uh, button. Internet's moving super slow here. Okay. Let me just kind of go to a... So your software will have a download button. Uh, let's try to find one. Order. DBA order. Let's see here under here. Uh, I guess I don't have one. Okay, so I'm just going to go back over here to this site. Sorry. Go over here to the Latana website. Once you download your order, you'll receive an email, and in that email, it will have a download link. If you're not able to download it from the download link, you can go into my accounts when you get to my accounts you want to go to on your dashboard you want to go to downloads now if you purchase the software and you forgot your passwords you can always reset the password uh, so when you go here to my account if you don't have the password it'll ask you to go in and reset your password but it once you're in your account you have in your orders any order that you've ever placed with me will be there and you can view it and any downloadable product will be here so for example I've got this uh, customer provided shirt form uh, I'll just click that download and then download it and download it to your desktop once you download the software it's going to download something like this and you're going to get an exe file 
you're going to have to extract the exe file so what you'll do is you'll just right click on the file go to unzipped oh extract extract all and then extract it to wherever you want to put it you can put you can now put the software anywhere that you want to put it okay so you're not you're no longer restricted to where you can have it at so that's a good thing so we're going to go ahead and extract it some people will have an issue when they extract the file um there's the file there it extracted and it actually opened so it'll extract yep that's 330 that's the last one so it'll extract and it'll come into a whole nother folder um some people have an issue when they get ready to and actually install because their their virus software will tell them that the file is unsafe but i guarantee you this file is safe the reason it does that is because um it's a new it's a new product basically and you know it doesn't recognize it so once you unzip the file you're going to open it up there's another file in that file called at miss t that's the file that you want i'm just going to drag that file and let me see i better rename it i better rename it because i've already got files on the desktop well let me just delete these up here i'll just delete these and get these out of the way so i'm going to open up the file move that app folder to your desktop or wherever you want it to be you can just to get it started you can move it to your desktop now i can move all of this out of my way i can actually delete that one so i've got let's see what's in that file oh, nothing just a, another empty folder so you've got the file once you've got the file i'm going to click it go through you're going to see install instruction oh wait a minute where is the file did i i'm sorry guys don't tell me i've extracted a file that i've already give me one second let me look in here sometimes i move stuff around okay sorry there it is i guess i extracted that file and i didn't pull everything out okay where am i at now okay i'm in the applications okay Is this the same file? I'm sorry, guys. I had a bunch of stuff on my desktop, so I got to look and figure it out. That's not the same thing. So anyways, go through, find this application, find the folder. And the folder should be labeled app uh, on yours. It should just be labeled app, Miss T. Um, and that's the folder that you that you want to open up uh, once you open the folder up you'll have install instructions and you'll have an invoice folder job proof folder and the software you will not have this R key and I'm going to remove this out of here because that's the registration key so when you open up your file on first run you're going to click it and it's going to tell you it's not activated it's probably going to tell you you need a registration key the cloud version does comes with the registration key embedded so you don't need that so i'm going to actually open up one that you're going to need a registration key too because i need you guys to see that that's not what i want i'm sorry i should have been more prepared on here let me go in here i've got a million and one Uh, copies of this software let's open up this one 
This is on 327. Okay. So if I was to open this software up, now this one you can see, it's going to tell you that the program's unable to recognize the registration key, okay? Uh, and that's because you don't have a registration key. So you need to copy this information right here. You need to copy this information. You're going to do that by hitting copy and then hitting contact Arthur. Once you hit copy and contact Arthur, then that's going to take you to the website where you're going to right click and paste the code, fill out the other information, and then send that over to me. Once we receive that, you'll get a kickback with an email with the code. Um, and the code, this is the key, okay? It may say activation key or serial key. I think we changed it to serial number. Um, so you will see the serial, the serial uh, number. So what you're gonna do then is you're gonna paste that in the same folder that you got your application in. And it needs to go not in the file. You need to unzip it and put it in there where it looks just like this, so it's side by side. Now, if you run it, it's gonna open up and it's activated. Your Each key is unique to your computer. Um, so you need to make sure that you keep, you know, your registration code to yourself because it is unique to your to your computer. On the cloud version, you're allowed three local PCs and then you can have, you know, it's unlimited cloud, but after three PCs, then, you know, we get a pop-up saying, hey, you know, it's over here, you're using it everywhere. But um, if you need more usages, then just let me know. So anyways, you go through here, you read up all through all of Lacan's little stuff, agree, and I'm going to close this, and then you'll get this pop-up. And then once you get the pop-up, the software will run. Um, it may take it a minute on first run to open up, and it could be because I'm running. I'm also running recording software. So let's see. Um, so I'm really pushing my PC right now. So when it opens up, you've got your, it's going to open up to the invoice sheet and you're going to get this pop-up with the calculator. So I'm just going to open it, and I'm going to kind of auto-hide this stuff up here. And I'm going to close this down for a second. So when you first open it up, this is what it looks like, and if you, you know, if you've had it before and watched the videos, all of this stuff is still pretty self-explanatory, um, but you've got here, you're going to go in, add your customer's information, and when you add in a customer's information, that information will save to the customer's database. I'm going to walk you through here, through the T-Zone, and then we'll come back and try to do a, um, a invoice. This little pop-up is brand new. This is something that's uh, exclusive to the 2019 version of the software and the red button is just the invoice page if you click here you can go and you can create this goes to your job proofs page to create your job proof um, once you have and let me show you how to do save it bring in the image for your job proof if you create a job proof and you want to send it out i hate that my thing is so big. Let me try to make my screen a little bit smaller. Well, that's not going to work. It's going to be too small. I want to make my screen smaller so you guys could see. Hopefully, does that help if I make the screen smaller? Uh, so you've got drop downs. Anything that's grayed out is a drop down. Okay. You've got your customers. Any customer that you add into your customer database is going to be over here and you're going to be able to um, let's see you're going to be able to look up that customer from over here from the drop down 
So you can either use the drop down or you can actually type in the customer's name um, and it'll pop up. And then the job number, you're going to change the job number yourself. Uh, you've got to drop down over here to change this stuff, to change the dates, the date from approval. And all of that information is under this tab called edit. So if you go in and change these ink colors, you can go in and change those. And you can also add more colors here by going to this last, very last row and right clicking it on the table and hit insert a row and you just insert a row below and that'll insert another row now um let's go back over here when you're ready after you've done your job proof or when you you've got your proof ready and you want to pop it in what i normally do is i normally actually have I don't have that on here. I normally put a t-shirt on here, just a standard t-shirt, and I switch out. But you can go in here and you can hit insert an image. And let me just insert, see if I can find the actual t-shirt or something. Uh, let's go here to pictures. So you're going to insert your job proof as an actual um, JPEG. So once I've got my job proof here, and I filled out all the information, I can go ahead and save it and send it over to someone. But if I've already got a t-shirt here with a proof on it, I want to switch it out to another proof, I don't have to go back up top. I would just go here to change picture and go from file and that'll open up your files and then you can wherever you have your image you can just go in and change it from there so you don't have to go back up there and do that now one thing that i did change here oh uh, you also have a drop down here to change your color to select the color of the shirt and to select the um size of the shirt i'm gonna have to make that bigger you guys because it's kind of bothering me um, being so small it's hard for me to see it as far as your print size you've also got drop downs here with print size and placement and all of that now as far as vintage and normal you can you know check that off and you've got drop downs here to add in the colors of the shirts and then you can just type in over here what you want. You got to drop down here also. So that's pretty much the job proof. Uh, once you get ready to, when you're done with the job proof and you, you're ready to save it for your customer, you can click save. You see, notice now that uh, instead of it just saving, it allows you the option to tell it where you want to save it to. So. You can now save it wherever you want to save it to. So I'm just going to go in here. The first time you open this up, it may not go straight to the job proofs form. So I'm going to open it up. Now I'm in the job in the job proof area, and I'm going to hit save. It's going to create a PDF, and it's saved. Now if I go here to do the same thing, and I'm just going to open it up, but I'm not going to save it, I just want you guys to see that we're actually in job proofs now. So that first time we did it, it kind of activated it and saved it for us. Got a little stop. So we're going to go here. That's the job proof. Once you create an order, your order is going to go over to job orders. And then from job orders, it'll create a sales report. I'll show you job orders. You'll have a job order here. And when you go into your job orders, your order will automatically come over here and then you can hit if it's done it's yes uh, if it's done it's yes if it's not done it's no so it's why and why and no i used to have it spell out yes and no so i guess that gave me a pop-up telling me hey i'm not entering in the right thing okay 
any job we've got this job that's due today and we've got a job that's past due when the job is done okay when the job is done it says up here to enter in one to zero i mean one to nine so i'm going to enter in a nine that'll cross that job out let us know that that job is done oh i've already got this open so that will save the job and you just go through here once you're done cross that out that's the job orders also going to take when you create a job it's going to send that oh that job from the invoice it's going to send it over and create a year to date sales report now when you get your version you may want to delete all of this information that i have in here you can easily do that by clicking on the last row dragging your mouse across leave these last these top two here and then right click and you can go to delete and delete rows and that'll clear all of that old information out you've also got the ability over here in the corner let me see if i can get to it to check your payment status okay this little highlight oh here we go oh it's not there there it is okay i can't see it on this on this screen so there's a little area here. Let me see if I can downsize that to where I can. I don't. I hope you guys can see it. But there's a drop down over here, and in this drop down it says paid, awaiting payment, and 50% paid. So you kind of know if you you know if the if customer still owes you some money. So I'm gonna go out here. Um, went over the sales report we got t-shirts the little t-shirt button is where you add a new product so if i wanted to add a new product i go here hit uh what product um the g200 let's put g200 and i'm gonna put gildan and i'm gonna put uh ultra cotton t So you add in your product and you can put in the wholesale price and then put in your markup. Uh, my markup is going to be 200% markup and add the product. It will give you a pop-up that says the product is added successfully. If the product is already in your database, it will tell you that this product already exists so that you won't you know, create duplicate products. At this time, if you need to edit a product, you'll have to click here to go to edit and replace. Now, this thing has a lot of products in it. So, let's kind of make this a little bit bigger. So, you've got a lot, a lot of products here. And this can become an issue with having so many products. I'm going to turn my thing on so I can tell if you guys say anything to me um, you could have an issue can, can you turn my phone on for me put my phone on charger so because that's the only way I'm sorry guys give me one second so I can chat um, what I was saying with the t-shirts is you have so many t-shirts that you can get overwhelmed so you can do one or two things you can either delete some of the t-shirts out or you can do what's called a filter and put your favorite t-shirts up top and i'm going to show you how to do that so if i was to highlight let's see i'm just highlight this line and i'm going to go to filter and i'll go filter by color okay Let's say if I like the, I like the Hanes. This shirt is a shirt that I that I use all the time, and I want that to come up to the top of my list. I'm going to select the whole product, right click it, and then go into the filter, and select filter by color. Okay, by the cell color, and then that should pop up up here. Give me one second, and it did not filter sales oh i gotta change the cell to the color that i want sorry guys so i'm going to highlight that color right click it format it change it to the cell color that i want 
And now I can go in and I can select the filter by color. And where is it? And I'm not seeing it. Okay. And if I can't get to it there, okay, there we go. So now I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say I want to select it to filter by the color. And that will filter everything that I have by color. Um, you can also filter so I can do like all of my colors. Let's say if I got, I'm going to go in, I'm going to clear that. Okay, so I would go through here and pull up whatever shirts that I normally like and put all of those, highlight all of those in yellow so they come up to the top first. Um, so let's just say, let me just go through here and just kind of highlight a couple of them just to kind of show. Um, uh, where is it at? Filter by the color. Okay. And then go here to style. And I'm going to filter by this color. And this will show everything that I have filtered by that color. I can also go in here and I can search through my products by the style number. And let's say if I don't know, I'm looking for a, for the, the Gildan 2000 but I don't really know the number, or, I, or if I know the number, I can put in 200. I could actually just go in here and just put in 2,000. Any products that um, are numbered in a 2,000 will pop up, and that will show me the product. Now, when you're going through here, you've got style, brand, description. Uh, these three categories combine and make up this category that you're seeing on the front end. And then you've got your wholesale price, your markup, and your retail cost. In here, your wholesale price is, your markup price, um, double markup. Let's say if you pay $2 for a shirt, a 200% markup is going to be 200 bucks. I'm sorry, not 200 bucks. It's going to be double, $4. It's a 200% markup. So you can go in and you can either click here and change your markup. And instead of you changing all of these markups one by one, you could just take that and you could just drag it down and do a global change if that's what you want to do. You can also go here and I'm going to clear that out. You can also just go in. I only want to see... You know, I sell a lot of next level, so I can just type in next level and it's only going to show me the next level brand. And then I can even go in further and I can say boys and it's only going to show me stuff with boys information, uh, boys t-shirts. So that's a good thing uh, there. And if you, you know, I think I already went over add new product. So let's go here to add new product. If you look here, those hangs that I had at the top that I filtered through, they're at the very top now. So whatever filter I set for my sorting filter, it'll only it'll show up here. So sometimes when I'm over here in the actual calculator and I'm doing an invoice, when I'm on the invoice sheet, I may want to just pop up here and, and get my number, my style number from here to put over here. So when you get the calculator, you've got to set it up. I'm going to go into the settings. I'm going to come back and then I'm going to do the, do this invoice. So when you go into the settings, you've got your apparel lookup, which we've already went through and you can easily just clear that stuff back out and show the whole thing, uh, by unchecking these little boxes here. Okay, um, you got a pair of colors, and so you just add in a color there that'll add the new color, and if you want to edit or replace a color, you can open it up here. All of these are basically, you're doing the same thing. Uh, you got size up charge, and so you can just put that in there, change, change out anything you want to change out, and you don't have to change it here. You can just click here and go here and also just change it out here to make it be what you want it to be. 
up but you got to close that down so i could say i don't want to do a markup on that i'll do a dollar or something like that okay so moving right along so we got the upcharge we've got the screen print and shop overhead now i'm going to tell you that before you do this is the part that you guys have really been waiting for before you do your shop overhead some people already have their information uh their price their price set up and some don't so if you need to figure out how much you need to be charged charging for screen printing in your shop you may want to go over to the shop overhead page first i actually should have had that on there first um uh, in front of screen printing Sorry guys, I'm trying to log back on to the online real quick. Okay. Okay. Okay, so I'm back online now. I'm trying to find the live chat. Give me one second. Okay. So now I got that stuff up. Okay. So when you're over here and you're getting ready to figure out your monthly operational costs, it's set up three different ways. Let me close this down because I want to make sure that I really, really get and kind of zoom in on this. So the monthly operational cost is going to be divided into three different categories. It's going to be your fixed cost, variable cost, and semi-variable cost. Fixed cost is your overhead and that usually does not fluctuate. Ten. You go ten. I'm online, yes. So your I'm sorry guys. Your fixed cost, op variable cost, and um semi-variable cost. So you're gonna enter in your monthly rent, your electric, gas, shop, phone, and internet. It's gonna give you your monthly costs here in this category. The only thing you want in your fixed cost is exactly what it costs you to keep your doors open. That's the cost that it costs you to keep the doors open, okay? Then you've got variable costs. Variable costs are things that we can kind of control like inks. We can buy cheaper ink. We can buy, you know, we can't really buy cheaper screens, but I guess we could. Um, printing supplies, cleaning supplies, things like that is going to give you a variable cost. And then last but leastly, it's going to be your employees. Even if um, you're the only employee, then you still want to pay yourself a monthly salary. So pop in there how much you pay yourself for a month. This is pretty much um, my shop over in here. I spend a little bit more than this over up in here. Uh, on supplies and stuff, but this is pretty much me where I'm at. Um, so once you put that in, it's going to give you your 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 operate your monthly operational cost. You're going to go in divide that by the number of weeks that you work in a month. So if you work four weeks in a month, you're going to put that in four weeks in a month. How many days you're open? in a month i'm normally open about 20 days i'm not open on the weekends um and then you're going to put in your how many hours per day so that's going to break it all the way down once you do that it's going to give you your weekly operational cost your daily operational cost and your hourly operational cost that's where we're getting down to the nitty-gritty because what we want to know is how much it actually costs us to keep our doors open. So that means I have to make $34 an hour to keep my doors open. And that's the minimum amount of money that I want to make is the $34. Now, I can go back up here and go to the T-Zone and go to my uh, screen printing information, to my screen print sheet, or... In this version, I've got the bottom area where if you're moving pretty quickly, you don't have, you can bypass that pop up. So now we're over here. What happens is that number for your hourly operational cost, it pops in over here. 
you want to calculate times that by the number by the amount of profit that you want to make so for example in this one it's just double so i say okay my base printing profit that i want to make in my shop is going to be 68 dollars an hour that's what i want to make i'm going to divide that by the number of one color prints per hour that I can do. So I average out about 60 prints per hour just printing one a one color job. That's gonna break down to me making, to me charging a dollar and 14 cents at the lowest, that's the lowest that I wanna make for a shirt, uh, for a print. So that's why we have it in here at, at the bare minimum. Now I could say, okay, I could go lower than that if I wanted to, but I wouldn't, um, but that's up to you. So what it does is it puts that in here at that 1200 piece markup. You guys are gonna have, some of you guys are gonna have your own prices. So if you have your own prices and you wanna put your own prices in here, you can do that. You're gonna have to contact me and I'm gonna have to, um, I've actually got the formulas where you cannot unlock them. So uh, on those, so you're gonna have to contact me and tell me, hey, I got my own prices. I don't wanna, you know, do this, do this method. But moving on along, you've got a quantity based markup. The way that this screen printing calculator works is you've got the cost you charge for screen fees, which is right here. So I'm going to say the cost I charge for screen fees, and this is on a front on a front location. Kind of zoom in, and I'll kind of fit that there. Okay, so this is on a front front location print. Um, cost we charge for screen fees in a primary location, which could be the the side with most colors. For let's go to 24 pieces. Well, this goes. This is a markup here, so this will mark up. Right now, this is at 100% markup. And then going across the bottom, it's 15% more per color. That's at 1,200 pieces. At 500 pieces, I do 150% markup. And then my base cost is 171. And then the percentage goes up. All of this stuff from the quantity markup and the percent by color markup, you can go in and you can edit that and make that your own. So I may not want to do, I don't like to do 12 piece orders. So I push that markup up really high. I can go in and I can edit that markup and say, I only want that markup to be 3%. That will change everything across this board. It changes this first number and this stays the same. So if I don't want to do 100% on here, I can just say, okay, this is only coming up a dollar more per color. I can say, okay, I'm going to do 50. Okay, and that'll drop the price on that. So that's how that works with the percentage and the markups. And you do that for each area, that uh, each print area. So you've got, with this, you've got primary, secondary and sleeves in odd places. Some people charge the same thing for everything. In my shop, we charge the same amount for printing on front as printing on back. But there's a shop not too far from me that charges one amount for printing on the front and another amount for printing on the back. If you charge uh, for screens, like I said, you'll put the amount you charge for screens here. If it's 20 bucks a screen, you put it in there and it'll pop it in there. Um, the amount that you charge for, for the screen. For some reason, that's just popping me up. Okay, there we go. Hmm. I'm not able to overwrite that formula. Let me see. I may have that, I may have that uh, locked. Oh, guys, let me show you something. So sometimes your sheets will be locked. You can go up here to where it says protect sheet and if it's if it's locked then unprotected i've got oh i think this is right here this is my screen call okay so the, i was peeing in that information see where i was putting in 10 bucks and it wouldn't let me do that sometimes i go in and i change this stuff so 
it's pretty hard for me to figure it out. So I've got my 20 bucks in it as a screen cost here. If you don't charge for screens, just put in zero and then you won't charge for any screens. If you're, uh, one thing that we do as screen printers uh, is we miss a lot of money uh, based on not charging for extras. So over here, that's what we have. You have your category where you have extra things, little extra things that you add on for uh, printing. Um, like for us, if we do a foil print, it's two bucks extra. So you can put that in. If you print on tri-blend goods and you're having to use specialty inks for that, you may want to add in an extra charge for that. All of this stuff is going to come together. So what you can do is you go through here after you do that, you go through here and you just set up your blank discount rate. Your blank discount rate is something that's new to the t-shirt calculator. It has nothing to do with your discount rate of screen printing. Yours may be nothing. Um, I discount shirts at 72 pieces, you get 10% off. Um, I This year, I bumped up the cost of my printing and decreased the cost that uh, I sell shirts for, basically because you've got places like Jiffy and people are out there, Jiffy shirts, people are out there buying, uh, they'll go and they'll buy shirts and they wanna bring them to you and they want you to print them. So if your print cost is real low, then guess what? They want you to print it, but they don't want to, you know, they, they, they don't want you to provide the shirt. So when you switch this stuff up like this on them, then it's kind of didn't make much sense for them to go and buy it from somebody else because now you increase the print price and they can get the shirts from you for the same price that they would get the shirts from another distributor. So you kind of put them in a chokehold. So this is just a percentage based uh, discount. And that's pretty self-explanatory. Let's go back over to the screen printing page. And before I go to, to, to the basic page to show you how to do a quote, I'm going to go over here to add expenses. You do have this area where you can go in and add your expenses uh, by the date, do your categories and all of that stuff. Um, You've got drop downs here that you can go in and set up and then it will create an expense report for you. This expense report is all you need to file taxes with. And these are just, you know, some dummy numbers. So at the end of the year, you'll have your totals on all of that. Sorry, no calls. So at the end of the year, you'll have your totals for, for, for that. Now I'm gonna go in and we're gonna actually run through a job. So I'm in here and I've got a customer. Oh, before I do that, let me show you this logo. I think I showed you guys already how to do this, but you just click the logo, change the picture from file, and put your logo. When you wanna change this information here, that information is over in the T zone and it's over here in the settings under Ad Company Information. I didn't go through the art fees and all of that stuff because that's pretty self-explanatory. And uh, the delivery times, which is going to be rush charges and stuff, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. So uh, unless one of you guys say something about um, me showing you that, then I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, go through that. So, I know this is a long video. Does anybody have any questions so far before we get started on the on the doing the actual um, anybody have any questions? Okay, I'm just taking a break to look at what you guys are saying out there. Okay.
Yeah, very similar to the last version of Raw. Okay, so pretty much I'm going to go through and show you the difference, what's uh, new in this new version. I'm going to close this out. Uh, you, when you add a customer, what we've done now is before you would have to add a customer and then go over here and drop, click a drop down. You no longer have to do that. And go t-shirt shop and put me in there and a phone number and that's good so I'm just going to add that in in the newer version you no longer have to click a drop down that information is already there for you so that information is there um, sorry I don't know who this is that somebody keeps trying to call in on my live. Okay, so that information is there for you. What we do have is we still have the smart search box. The smart search box is for you to type in stuff like Gildan. You could type in, uh, in this box, you would type it in and then you would click this button right here. I don't really want to do it because I'm uh, recording and I don't want to freeze up my system. So... And hopefully I didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Okay. So that all is pretty much the same. You've got your products here that you can type in. After you do your search and search for your product there, you can type in the type of t-shirt that you're looking for. And it should populate. If the t-shirt does not populate for some reason, click that drop-down box again and then click on the number and it'll populate. Sometimes it does that when uh, you've just gotten the software and it's getting to, you know, kind of getting to its feel for you. Change in the type and then add in some text, uh, some quantity. So once you add in the quantity, you've got whatever prices you set are going to pop up here. Now what I did to make this a little bit clearer for customers is we went in and we added the cost per item. So this is the actual cost that they're paying for this item, $2.63. If there was an upcharge, if I put seven shirts here and I charge an upcharge for, remember I went in there and I changed that to a dollar. I would never do that. Um, so let's do the 4X because I would never sell an upcharge of that. So $4 here is $4, $4 more per shirt. So you've got your upcharge here. Your discount rate doesn't kick in until that customer buys so many shirts. So let's say if they bought 100 shirts and you got a 10% discount, then your discount rate would kick in. And this is the final cost down here that they're paying for the shirt. This makes the customer feel good. They felt like, hey, you know, I got shirts at a discount. I didn't go to another website and buy it. I'm here. I'm getting it from a one-stop shop. So that's a good thing in this one. If you want to add more products, there's a little plus button. And you click that and you add the next product. You can add up to five products. There's another plus button. So you click that and keep adding products. Got your screen printing area that you've already set up your prices for a screen printing. And on the screen printing, you've got one to eight colors. If you need to print, if you have a press, this software is for smaller shops, so normally eight colors will do it for us. If you need to print more than eight colors, then, you know, let me know, and I could go in and customize that for you. Uh, but I've never had anyone ask for more than eight colors, so uh, this is how you set that up. So we've got two colors on the front, and we're going to do a normal print. If I want to do a vintage print, I'd put an X there and put a zero here. That would change that. X right here changes that. Um, if I'm doing a, a color change, whatever charge that I charge for a color change is here. So in my shop, a color change is the same amount as the screen. So I'd put 20 bucks. If you don't ch charge for screen fees, you can just take this, right-click it, and make this black but if you do charge screen fees you would probably want to show that or or you don't have to it's up to you uh even if you charge screen fees 
you can say the fee is this I just would hide this because this fee is going to be here the printing cost is all together so um, this just keeps you from people coming into your shop and asking you can they have screens uh, the screen fee is included in, in in the price of the printing so now basically what we do is when somebody comes in we tell them the cost of the shirts and the cost of the printing or you can just do it if you're one of those shops who don't charge separately you can just give them one price okay so we've got the cost of a color change let's say this customer wanted one color change it's 20 bucks any additional charges that you charge for will be here so if we did a fall overlay on 117 shirts that's how much it would cost uh, if we were printing on caps then that would be the extra so all of this little extra stuff here will really really help you uh, like for me i don't like doing butts printing on butts so we charge for everything that we don't like to do or that takes up our time so that we make sure we get our money here go on here down other things that you can do you got an error to add digital products or to add other products so digital products i have that set up for heat transfer you can set it up for whatever you want and we just have it set up as you know 20 to 25 products um let's see here okay so there we go um, you can set that up for whatever you want, but we have it set up here for heat transfer. Even if you're selling names and numbers, you can put in, you know, a four inch number, a eight inch number, and then, you know, do it like that. We also have an area for anything else that you, that you sell. So the thing with the t-shirt calculator is that you're able to quote multiple things on one invoice so if you were doing screen printed fronts and then doing names and numbers on the back you're able to do that on one invoice or you may be doing some shirts and then you're going to do some embroidery on caps you can add in the cost of the caps put your caps down here with uh, with your embroidery and so let's say here let me go uh, kind of go up sorry guys so here this area is for other products and you'll set up your other products um, over there's a place that says other products here so you'll set up your other products here let me go back over here to the calculator once you're done and you've put everything in and added in all of your quantity and whatnot I went back to my old style uh, that gives you a layout with a breakdown of what everything is costing so you've got that cost there you've also got your options here for art if you charge for art fees you've got ready art and you've got you know standard art different things that you charge for art fees so all of that stuff is in there for you to set up if you don't charge for art go over to the art page and put in all zeros but everybody should be charging for art if you're offering rush service uh, let's say if we did a 48 hour rush this is charge you 75 percent that's based on whatever price that you put over in uh, your over in your system so and these are just you know numbers uh, but that's based on so seven days is not considered a rush here we print 10 days out if you have if you want to charge for packaging and handling we do that by a percentage and you just put the percentage there and that'll populate that basically package and handling just overwrites our our um, credit card fees so we'll give you a cash discount for paying in cash you won't pay a package and handling fee in my shop other than that you will so that package if you came in and they paid in cash cash being cash or check they would save thirteen dollars and twenty two cents I wouldn't pay the processing fee I pass that on to my customer it's gonna give you the average cost here 
Now, notice in this version that taxes is at the bottom. And we are now taxing everything because the comptroller here in Texas says tax everything now. Our laws have changed. Um, I've talked to several people in different states. Their laws have changed. So we tax everything just so that we can make sure that we're covered. So we're just taxing everything. We're even taxing shipping. So we're putting tax on anything that, that, that we sell so we don't have any problems. And if this was a non-taxable, let's say if it was a school or a non-profit, we can just easily take that tax off. But we would want to make sure that over when we create this customer at the top that we put that tax ID number in or whatever number your state, however your uh, state verifies those taxes. And you probably want to create a file uh, in that file in that same file path up here um, where you create the order uh, hmm, maybe I could put something there to, to pop up and open up and see those taxes because don't want to create an order just to do that where you could put a form there maybe that'll be something in another update um, but anyways so you've got all this stuff down here with your with your terms and then you want to go up here to the top and you're ready to create the order. The only difference in this version in creating the order is now when you create an order, instead of it just going in and automatically doing the order, creating the order and sending it over to the job proof page and to, the, to your um, sales page, it will open up and allow you to decide where you want to put the file. Again, on first run, this is going to open up somewhere else. So go back, just click that back button, go to application files, and put that in the invoice folder. Hit save, and you're done. If you want to, you can separate your actual orders from your quotes. And the way you want to do it, you want to do that because you, when you create an order, that order actually creates a job order and goes over to the job form for you. If you create a quote, it doesn't do that. Um, and one more thing, I'm going to let that finish working. And does that catch up? Okay. So you see that clears the form. So if you have a customer in your shop, um, you don't, you may not want to go back and go to the job, to that form to find that order. So you can actually print now from within the program. So that's a new feature that we added. Hopefully pretty soon we'll add direct email, uh, for you to email the quote instead of having to go over and, uh, get the quote from, you know from from the folder so if we go here and go back to the desktop I believe I put it on the desktop wherever you put it uh, wherever we created those folders I'm just clicking on stuff and it's not is this okay in the application files here so wherever those folders are, any invoices that we created will be there. Now, you're not going to want to keep going back and forth to this same folder. So what you may want to do is you can right click because you can't move your software out of the folder with, uh, you can move your software out of the folder with these folders, but you can't move it from the registration key. So some people like to take this and create a new, right click, create a new folder. Uh, and then in that new folder, you can label that new folder software and then you can take this and drag it and put it in that folder. Uh, but you wanna create a desktop shortcut and to do that, you'll just right click. And when you right click, look for shortcut or send to. So send to desktop, that creates a shortcut there for me. So 
now I can open up my software from over there. So that is about it, unless someone has some questions. Uh, I'm going to actually put the video up afterwards so, so that anyone can see. So you guys can see what's going on. Uh, do you, anyone have any questions? I know there were several people who I sent uh, emails to who were having problems downloading going into their account, things like that. Um, I think that should pretty much solve the issue of the download problem. Uh, when I do updates, that's one thing that I need to show you guys, is when I send out an update, you will not receive, in the future, you will not receive a new calculator, but instead you will receive a data file. The data file, you will take the data file and you will come here and you will import the data, okay? So you can either get data from file and if I send you data, if, you send, if you're sending me data, I may tell you to come here, go to your data file and come right here and export that, uh, well, this is to import the data. Import the data that I've sent you and I may also tell you to send me a data file. But if I send, when I do an update, it'll automatically, once you go here and come to this legacy wizard, it'll automatically go in and update all of that. There's something that I wanted to show you guys um, with Excel that I cannot think of. Oh, if you're not wanting your tabs at the bottom to show, and you can always go into options and then under options in here. I don't want you guys to come in and play around in this unless you know what you're doing. Uh, but I'm going to show you in here under options and I believe it's under advanced. You can go in and search and find an area that says show sheet tabs if you turn that off that'll turn that off also these horizontal bars if you don't have the bars on the side where you can move left to right and up and down make sure that those are checked i'm trying to see is there anything else um if for some reason you're you're uh sh showing formulas in your sheet instead of calculations this button is checked so most of the things that are done that you'll have issues with they'll they'll be you'll be able to solve them by coming over here uh, formula calculations is set to automatic and you want to leave that set to automatic you don't want it to be manual uh, because manual you would have to do you would have to click on it and then go up to the top and activate it so if for some reason you see anything going on with your calculations and it's not calculating go in and check make sure that you haven't by some kind of way turned that over into uh, manual you just got different stuff in here you got your save um, I would recommend to go into save and do an auto backup of this every five minutes and then you can set a certain area that you want this to be in um, you can also set where you want this to save to by default whether you want it to save for the people who have one drive whether you want it to save to the computer by default or what if you are wanting to if you have the pro version and you're wanting to save to the cloud that's very easy you're just going to click on this button here and it's going to tell you to turn to turn on auto save and then you put this up in the cloud and then everybody on your team can work from it and you can work from your ipad or whatever uh well not your ipad because your ipad will you can work from your from your laptop computer on the go the buttons on the excel app do not work um, because you just can't it, it doesn't support all of the different macros and the functions that are in the background on this.
let me look and see if you guys have any questions I know it's been a long video Oh, the next update that will be coming uh, will be here in the T-Zone. We'll have a new update. And that, oh, I'm sorry, guys. I forgot to tell you this. If you want to look up your customer's information or something like that, you can click here. Um, again, you're going to have to click it and then go into that file folder. But that's a quick way to look up uh, information. And once you're in the invoices, well, we don't have any invoices to show here. But let's say we want to, sh your invoice is going to save under INV and the customer's name and the invoice number. But let's say you wanted to find that customer by phone number. You can just type in this search box their phone number. And if there's a phone number that's in that file, it'll pop up that invoice here. So you can do a search there. Okay, well, this is going to be the end. I'm at the end of the tutorial. I cannot think of anything else that I need to show you guys. Um, the new update will be in about a month, um, unless there's something that somebody calls me with and says we have some type of hiccup or something that we need to fix. We'll have a new date update in a month, which will be the actual my actual HTML uh, quoter that I'm going to put here, and that's going to give you the ability to uh, just instead of doing a quote on a whole invoice to do that little pop-up to where you could just do the uh, just type in you know how many colors quant how many colors quantity and get an instant price so I'm going to add that into into the software and uh, I'll probably go ahead and come out with a mobile version real soon but if you guys don't have any other questions I'm going to go ahead I'm going to get off of here and thanks for watching.
guys thanks for watching that is the end of the video i don't know about y'all but i'm tired i am going to leave the video up for you guys for a little while and then i'll go and i'll unlist the video um if you have any questions feel free to shoot me an email over to latana at t-shirtshopdallas.com or go to latana.com and uh, you can you can contact me over there. Uh, you can also contact me on Facebook. But I'm going to get out of here and go and get me some lunch. And you guys have a great day. Peace out.